up guys welcome back so today we're going to be discussing what I believe you should and shouldn't be doing when it comes down to your vehicle's maintenance so less talking more action let's get started right guys so yeah I just wanted to basically touch on and talk about maintenance but in terms of if you've just bought a vehicle I've seen um, too many times in the past, whether it, and not all, not camper vans in particular, you know, I'm talking about modified cars, track cars, people's general everyday vehicles. I've seen friends buy a car for £1,200 and then go out and spend two grand on a set of wheels, but like the car hasn't had an oil and filter for like three years. I mean, it's just obscene. You know, it's ever such a funny one because so many people do it and not necessarily even people who are only buying modifications for the car or doing a camper conversion. Just general day-to-day -day people as well. Um, I used to work on cars many, many years back and I used to see it all the time. You know, someone would break down and then they'd slag that car off to the hills. However, their service book is empty. You know, it, it, it's, kind of, it's kind of stupid really, but as a lot of people like it. So I thought I'd just explain how I feel and what I think is uh, probably a good thing or a good way to go about it. What I've done, what I've actually done for this, I purchased the van with the hopes and intentions of doing the full camp conversion, which we're currently doing, you know, a video by video each other week, every other week. And I purchased this, I drove it home, and then pretty much give and take straight away, I ordered a full service kit for it. A cam belt kit, a oil, um, a water pump. Sorry. Now the water pumps are quite common. The cam belt wasn't due for about I did work it out about eight months, nine months. It wasn't even really due. I don't think. Me being quite fussy. However, I decided to spend a day on it. So I put it on the ramp. I borrowed my mate's ramp at his work. Put it on the ramp. I did a full vehicle inspection on it, so I now know the current state of this vehicle. So I did a full inspection on it, I fitted a cam belt, a water pump, obviously flushed all the system out, new oil and filter, new air filter, new fuel filter, and yeah, it's pretty much good to go now. I know everything about the van, I know everything new on it, I saw, oh, gearbox oil as well we did, um, I saw the condition of the oil being removed so the gearbox oil was like brand new so the last owner must have just changed it because these boxes are quite common so i wanted to see if there's any like metal filings like metallic -y, um kind of colors or shades in the oil to to, to tell me that there's swarf or debris uh, coming off the box internally nothing you know but now i know that I've got a great chassis, it's not rotten, I've got a great um, set of wheel bearings, I've got a great, you know, exhaust's all done, the, the full service is done, I know this is good to go and it will fly for an MOT, because if you've bought something that's just got an MOT, I'm not going to put a negative twist on it, however, a lot of people these days know somebody who's an MOT tester, it's a shame, but it's true, and a lot of people can get a, an MOT, you know, if you know what I'm trying to say, so... Just because yours is only, has got 11 months of MOT left on it doesn't necessarily mean that it's roadworthy. So I believe it's always worth checking. Now, another reason would be the last thing I'd want to hear about, and I'm sure it's the last thing any of you would want to do, would be to purchase a van, we'll say 10 grand. You go out, you buy yourself a van, £10,000. It looks absolutely fantastic. It's just had a paint job, blah, 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 blah. You then go out and buy the pop top, fifteen hundred pounds. You buy the cupboards, a grand. You buy the bed, five hundred, a thousand pounds. You know, we're just going to say you buy everything you need to to do the conversion that you want to do, and then you take it to a garage for an MOT or something like that, and you find that there's a big crack down the hole of the chassis. Now it's an extreme circumstance, and that's probably never ever going to happen. However, I'm going extreme just to try and put the point across. You've then got all that stuff in your house when the van is kind of scrap you know so i'm not saying you're gonna likely have bought a scrap van however i'm just saying i believe it's good to know what your van is from a professional or from an expert now i've done all this work to mine so far for service or repair wise i haven't um done any videos on it and i haven't done any how to's on that because 
I was going to, but I kind of felt that a cam belt and things like that. I encourage people to do things themselves, but there is some things that should be done by the professionals. And the last thing I want is someone inboxing me because they've had a go at the cam belt after watching my cam belt video and they've messed it up and they've jumped a tough and they've scrapped the build or, you know, it's just not what I want really. So there's certain things that I'm not going to film. Uh, most of the repair work is like in terms of service, what we're talking about now. I'm not really going to film because I think that some stuff you've got to pay for, you know, your steering and your brakes and stuff like that, they've got to be right. You know, I'm not a big fan of people doing that sort of stuff themselves unless they know what they're doing. So pay the professionals, get it, get it, get a, you know, 200 point check or whatever it is done on your vehicle. And at least then you've got a full report and you know the current state, the current condition, regardless of whatever salesman has told you, this is new, this is new, you know. Have a good look before you purchase it, but then get your own professional uh, second opinion, if you like. Get get someone who has not um, got the interest of a sale in mind or a garage that got the interest of commission in mind. Get an actual independent person who's getting paid by you for their honesty and their professional opinion. So I recommend that, and at least then you'll know what you've got and what you're going to work with and then when you purchase the cupboards and the beds and etc etc you know you're doing it to a good van because if you if you're doing it to a bad van and it's going to cost you even more and more and more you know you probably are getting to the point of just you could have just bought one which you know we're all promoting diy stuff however if you're going to build your own you don't want it to owe you six thousand seven eight thousand pound more than what you could have just bought one the same standard as yours for. That would just be silly. I believe I'm going to go a little bit further than the average company would. A lot of people pay eight, nine, ten thousand pounds for a camper conversion on the van they already have. I mean, it's just crazy. But they they're great vans. They work, and that's what it is. So, just a little one. We're going to move on to a bit of uh, fitting now. So we're just going to fit a little strut that I've bought just for under the bonnet so basically it'll just make it's just a little easy just a nice little fancy thing it, it just makes it a little bit easier if you need to do any maintenance and repair so yeah so basically that's coming now hit that thumbs up button if you appreciate me trying to share knowledge and wisdom with you because i want you to go down a good path and sit back enjoy right then let's get started so first of all what we're going to do is we're going to fit this bonnet strut. Now, this is just an eBay item. It was only like £10, I think it was, or £15 at the most. It just comes bubble wrapped. You get the two fittings and the strut itself. Now, the reason I want to fit this is because, one, it's just a lot easier than that to use, a lot user friendly, and two, this standard like original bonnet stay if you like or prop or whatever you want to call it it's quite tricky for some reason this is really awkward in here now i'll show i'll try and show you the best i can to, to get this off i mean look at that because it's clipped here to keep it in now that that's quite a lot of pressure i'm putting on that um, i mean it is a struggle now I could correct this and realign it and make it a little bit easier, or I could just put up with it. But for the sake of ten, fifteen pound, I think that's a nice mod to do. It helps if you ever break down, or if it's just a little bit quicker and whatnot. But also, because this has got a T five point one bonnet and front end etc on it, they come with the fittings already in place. So there's the thread. I think it's an M eight thread, and there's the other one. I don't know if you can see that just down there so it's cheap mod easy to fit 99% of people leave this on as a backup now I'm not going to the reason for that is one because the holding clip or the retaining clip that holds that in place doesn't exist on this fan for whatever reason when they've changed the front end they've obviously not changed that clip so it flaps around that bugs me and two because people go oh yeah but it's a backup well i'm all about weight on this fan i'm going to be putting so much weight into this fan that anything i know it's so light that little part is but if you was to add all the light little bits up and put them all together at the end of the build it does make a difference you know it's probably this probably 
the difference of a seat or not, you know, eventually, because I'm going to really strip this out. But basically, I kind of feel that people keep it for an emergency. Oh, yeah, but if the bonnet, foot, if the bonnet strut fails, then I've got something to hold it up. Well, I mean, I've, I've had cars for, you know, um, a many amount of years now, and I've never had a bonnet strut fail. So you kind of, you know, you're more likely to have your gearbox fail or something, and people aren't carrying second gearboxes, well, most people aren't. So I kind of feel that it's a bit overkill. Plus, there's always stuff in the cabin. If you've got one of those pull-out tables, you know, there's a leg on it. That If you was in trouble, you could always prop the leg up from the mount into the bonnet or even get your missus to hold it or whatever it may be you'd be able to hold it up if that strut was to fail as you can see here there's no there's no clip so that just sits there like that and that kind of bugs me to be honest so let's get some tools out and let's get it fitted so to do this job I've got a tub of grease, I've got a 3 8 ratchet, I've got a deep 3 8 12mm socket, little extension bar, obviously the parts to fit it, and the torque wrench. Now this is an M8 thread, so what we're going to do, we're going to see if these are clean enough to take because it's been painted and they haven't masked them off. We're going to put a bit of grease on the bolt and we're going to run them in. So you don't have to do this, I choose to do it. Now you could argue that you could use copper, copper slip, copper grease, aluminium grease, all these different stuff that other people use. For me, I've got this tub at home, it's handy, I'm just going to use this. I'm just going to run a little bit in like that, not, over, not too much, and then we'll run that. And if you can see that well, we'll run that into there, and then as it winds in, it should cover the grease across the thread all the way along. This will probably never come out, but it just helps that in the future, if I have any problems with it, I can uh, hopefully get it out easier. So I'll put that one in the same, and we'll get to the tightening up. So there's no washers supplied in the kit. I was going to put washers on, but I've decided not to. Um, this thread didn't take very well, so I've actually got a thread tap, like a restorer tap, and actually re tap this back out because of the paint. But I didn't show you that because I didn't want to overcomplicate it because I appreciate most people doing this kind of stuff and watching these DIY builds isn't going to be doing that. I've restored the thread on this, but I appreciate most people aren't going to have that sort of tool in, so I didn't show that. Now, I kind of don't like how that sits on there without a washer. I don't mind it on there because the bonnet isn't exactly 100% perfect, the surface, because of the paint and stuff. And also, it kind of looks okay. I'm not happy with that. So I'm gonna actually fit a washer to that right now. So, fitted that, I haven't gone for a spring washer or anything, I've just gone for a normal washer. And I think that's a lot better. Just spreads the load and it just looks a lot neater and a lot more tidy. It's not going to make a difference on alignment because as you can see these are offset anyway. It's not going to make a difference and because the way these work they sit on a ball system in there and that allows that to be offset anyway so that won't make a problem. So what we'll do now is you could just tighten these up by hand as long as you know you're not, you don't use your gorilla strength and over tighten them they only need to be nipped you can always if you if you've got doubt of this, the tightness just tighten them up a little bit just nip them and then just you know check them over the next couple of weeks just put a spanner on because obviously it'll be fitted what we're going to do is rule of thumb for a m8 thread is 25 newton meters so i've actually got a torque wrench here today and we're going to fit these and tighten them up to 25 newton meters and i'll show you that process now all right set the torque wrench to 25 newton meters lock it off and the bottom of the handles are locked there so it won't move set it to the direction you need now these torque wrenches are quite cheap you can pick something like this up for 10 15 pounds and they're quite accurate 
and if you ever buy anything like this and you're unsure if you look at the specs of most things you buy it probably will have a tightening torque or a tightening sequence to it so some things you might have to do in stage like 10 newton meters then 50 newton meters etc but for this you're just going to do it to 25 and i'll show you that keep turning until you can hear it click yeah that do you hear that click that's when it's reached its torque so that there it's clicked off it's not tightening anymore now you can let that set off for a couple of minutes do this one okay so top one recheck 25 bottom one kicked off now doing that I did feel that that was probably ever so slightly maybe not but maybe just a little bit too tight so I'd probably recommend especially on this one because the whole panel moves I'd probably recommend 20 newton meters is a good tightness but this see this here so you've dug into the paint there that's why I like to use washers right so on to fitting this I've just put a little bit of grease on the surface of either those these do come I don't know how well you'll see that but inside there these do come with a little bit of grease in but there's no harm with a little bit more so all these do now is you basically pop it on like that I don't know how well you saw that so that bottom one's now clicked in now as you can see the bonnet when that's on is actually a little bit higher than when this is on so what you have to do like that, and then lower the bonnet down to that you know, push that on clip that on make sure the two retaining clips out the back are still firmly in and then pushed out and there you go the bonnet is now holding itself doesn't that in my opinion look a lot nicer than this thing you have lost a little bit of height I'd probably say two inches of opening but I think that's a small price to pay and generally you're working like this anyway so it's okay I'm not concerned about that now we'll get this out okay, we've got it out so one thing I would do is I'll put this this side of the strut it'll be a lot easier to get it out but you can get it out so what you have to do is you can see there that it kind of hooks in to the body so it won't come out so all you have to do is you have to pry this seal or grommet or whatever you want to call it pry that away like that to then make that loose in the hole and then just come to the right angle and then pull it off so i'll now remove this phillips screwdriver and clip that out of the back that'll be gone and then that's the finished result. Will get better as it gets used more. Basically, when it shuts, folds away like that. There we go, holds itself. How much better is that? For £10, I don't think you can go wrong just makes life so much better so all I've done here is I've popped the original grommet back in to the hole just because it wasn't painted great underneath there so that just looks a little bit more finished a little bit better that obviously weighs nothing so I'll put that back in sorted